Oh, we're doing the uh, Daddy Jack uh, sandwich tonight. It's uh, basically a roast beef po' boy um, made uh, the way they do it at Mother's um, in New Orleans. Uh, there they call it the Ferdy. This is my version of it, it's a chuck roast. And we're going to stud it uh, with a few things. So the idea is you, you get in here and you cut little pockets into the meat. You don't want to cut all the way through. Just cut pockets into it. And then uh, you get some green onion. We'll save save this for stock later on. Um, you take a piece of uh, green onion, a couple pieces you stick down in there. You take some hot pepper. These are cascabel peppers. Stick some hot pepper down in there. A few pieces here. this, a little green onion, more hot pepper, and you can take it right up the stems. It doesn't matter if the seeds are in there. And uh, we're hoping Jack's feeling better uh, after his procedure. Um, and we're gonna do this a few times, and what we do here, garlic also has to go in here. So here's a, a trick. If you are having trouble peeling your garlic, save all this uh, this paper, this garlic paper. Uh, put it in your, save it, put it in your stock pot. Um, if you'll just cut the root in off these, but you don't want to mash them, uh, the good thing to do is you just, and it, I mean, if you just have a few like this, it doesn't really matter. But if you have a lot of garlic to do, you just put them into a pan. This is going to be loud. And put two of them together. And it peels your garlic for you. Your, your garlic comes out fully peeled. That's cool. And then uh, you also stick your garlic down in those little slits. Wow. Flip the meat over here. We'll do a couple on the other side. Uh, like I say, these are cascabel peppers. So they're they're pretty hot, uh, but they mellow out when you when you put heat on them. So won't be any problem with that. But they'll add a real really nice flavor. Uh, let's see here, what am I forgetting? Just a little bit more garlic in there. She does. She just smushes it. Why you smush it? I don't know. To get the juice out? Yep, that's exactly right. To get the oils out. So now that we got all this studded, you want to. Uh, this is a small roast, but it's just it's enough for us here. So um, it's gonna cook down. These I just now ground this pepper. Just put that on there. Yeah, he did that. Some salt. Because we were trying to make pumpkin pie, and he did that. <laughs> and uh, also we're gonna put some Daddy Jack's uh, blackening seasoning on there. It's this is for sale on uh, patreon.com forward slash cooking with the blues. Get all this on. Uh, now you, I've already got my, my pan heated over here. You always want your pan waiting on you, not the other way around. So that will brown up real quick. And while it is, uh, over here at the back, I have um, some stock, beef stock going. And what I've done here is I have beef finger bones that I've been cook, making the stock with. And the idea is you want to blanch your bones first for about 15 minutes in boiling water pour that water off, because that's if you've ever had stock that has uh, kind of a, a twang to it, you know, off pudding flavor, that's where it comes from, is not blanching your bone first. Then you roast it about 425 degrees for in the vegetables for, you know, so that everything gets good and brown, some tomato paste on them. And uh, then that's gonna go in here to, to 
make what's called the debris gravy or debris gravy. It's gonna have celery, onion, and bell pepper in it. And uh, let me get this cleaned up, get this browned. We'll be right back and I'll show you how to uh, put it all back together. Heat's browned off um, both sides. You can see what kind of color we got on it. There's very little fat in the pan, um, which is a good thing. Um, this pan, you ought to get one of these pans. You can get them. This pan costs about 15 bucks. It's called um, Auto Settle. Uh, you get it at the Mexican grocery stores, Latin grocery stores, ethnic, anything like that. Uh, the brand is uh, Musa, but it's uh, it's cast aluminum. It's real good. It, it, it uh, conducts, transfers heat real well, and it's just almost indestructible. So, the way you want to cut the onion, cut the root end off. I'm oh, sorry, this is the root end, cut the other end off. And then, uh, I'm cutting it this way instead of the, the normal way because I, I don't care if these are going to be a larger dice because this is all going to cook way down in the sauce and for the gravy in this case and save that stuff for your stock. Um, just come in here and cut it up like this. That's, that's probably enough. Again, this 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 gravy is called a, a debris gravy, a baby gravy. What's going to happen to this? When you sauce this sandwich, you put the beef down, and when you, the sauce is going to have all these little pieces. Uh, if you just cut your celery this way, just cut straight down through it, and then go back across. Uh, you know, that's about how much you want for the amount we're making here. Cut your bell pepper that way. That's all you lose. That's the only, and you could actually trim that off. And you don't waste. I mean, these things are two dollars at Walmart uh, but uh, if you have multi-colored peppers those work too but uh, th there's no, this is not precise it's real rustic so you don't care if it's different size pieces that's about what you want right there and then uh, that goes in the pot with all that and mix that around a little bit. And uh, uh, I make this myself. This is roasted garlic. If you notice the top of it, uh, you, you roast the garlic for 45 minutes at you know 375 degrees in the oven, and then you mash it up, and then put a little olive oil on top of it, where it will keep it. Uh, fresh and then uh, keeping your icebox it'll last for months a couple months and uh, so I like a little bit of that in there I like roasted garlic flavor with the fresh garlic that's in the meat um, and then the bone from the uh, the stock we've made the bone goes in there and then you just fill it over with the look how look at the color of that stock it's all natural And uh, that will, that, and, and also make, whenever you add stock or water or anything into uh, something you're cooking, make sure it's the same temperature. That way the, the pot doesn't have to recover. Um, now we've not uh, seasoned the, uh, the, the, the vegetables, more pepper in there and uh, some more salt, but the, uh, the stock is not salted. So you want to compensate for that. And then a little of my just all purpose seasoning. This is thyme, oregano, a little bit of cayenne, paprika, onion powder, garlic powder. Put some of that in there. It's, it's got a little bit of cayenne, a little bit more cayenne than, than it might normally. Uh, it come up to temperature, we'll cover it, and that will cook until that meat completely falls apart. Probably about four and a half, five hours. And then this evening we'll come back, we'll build the sandwich. The bread of the sandwich is from uh, Amorosa's in um, Philadelphia. If you've ever been to Geno's or Pat's uh, cheese steak, that's the bread that you ate there. And we get it here for the bakery here in Terrell, Whistleway Bakehouse, for our sandwiches during the week. And uh, but, so it's it's the bread and then mayonnaise. I don't like a lot of mayonnaise, but in this sandwich you need it for the richness. Raw fresh cabbage and thick cut ham, this roast beef, and then the baby gravy over the top of it. And, it'll be absolutely delicious. 
And last night, while this is going, I put a pork butt in uh, the smoker. Uh, anybody can do this. It's just a this is just a shoulder pork butt. It's not a picnic. It's a, it's a, it's a butt. And put whatever kind of rub you want on it. If it's just salt, pepper, you know, paprika, uh, chili powder, if that's what you like. You can buy pre-made rubs. Um, the grocery store will have them. You know, put brown sugar if you want to make your own. Things like that. And, uh, you smoke it at 225 in pecan for about 15 hours. And uh, you, they do the thing called the Texas Crutch where you wrap it 160 in non-wax butcher paper and you finish it internally to 205 degrees. I like to cut the meat into this crosshatch so it, 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 it improves the surface of the meat and it gives you more of what's called bark. But the, uh, the test to see if you've done it cor correctly is to pull the bone out. And this is about as clean of a bone as it comes out. And you see it's still steaming, it just came out. We'll shred this and make uh, pulled pork sandwiches later, but uh, we'll see you in about four and a half, five hours. The, uh, the chuck roast is done. Uh, it's been cooking for about four and a half hours now. I took the femur bone and I cleaned all the marrow out of it. So it's served its purpose. So the roast is just falling apart. Uh, I'll set it here, you can see it just comes right apart, all the garlic inside of it, and those cascabel peppers and green onion. So I get it about like, probably about like that. I like, it, I like it not to be completely shredded. I like to have some texture to it. And then I've got another pan heated here. So to finish it, I finish it to order, uh, the sauce, the, the gravy. Put a little bit of that in there. Not that, not that much, I guess. If you'll notice why they call it debris gravy, you can see the all the onions and bell pepper and pieces of meat, celery, garlic, hot peppers. And I'll put some heat in that. And then, oh, uh, when we cut last time uh, for it to cook, I just, I didn't do this on camera, but I added a little bit of uh, tomato paste and red wine to deepen up the, the flavor. You added that just to the roast? Correct, just to the roast. And then I keep this in the ice box. It's called Bermonade. Um, it's equal parts flour and just butter. And it, it's, it's a dough is what it is. What it is, it's, a, it's basically a raw roux. Um, so if you've got a sauce that you're wanting to thicken, but like you've got a lot of sauce here, but you're wanting just thicken some of it, you just break a few pieces up and throw it in there. And you just keep this in the ice box. That way, if you just have a, a little, maybe your sauce is thick, but it's not quite as thickened as you'd like it to be, you just maybe just need one of these instead of two or three. Then it'll, um, what it does, it, um, the culinary term is called mounting. It mounts the, the sauce after, uh, not only thicken it, but it, it puts a sheen to it. Makes it real nice and um, makes it look like something you'd want to eat. And you don't want this to be as thick as a gravy. You want it to be kind of loose. Um, and that's that's getting there, not quite. Put some more heat on it. Um, back up please, JD. And it's in there. And this doesn't change the flavor. Like a, a roux, for instance, I believe there are 15 uh, levels of roux. Blonde roux all the way up to a number 13, 14, 15 brick roux. Well, those all have flavor uh, elements to them. This does not change the flavor of the sauce at all. And as I say, you can thicken as you need. Um, so it's getting about right there. You know what you want to do. Uh, there's no lumps when you do it like this. And what you want to do, that's that, the break in the, that's the nappe, the, the consistency that you want. So we'll kill the heat on that and on this. And then we'll come over here. This is Amarosa bread. I spoke about before. The trick to this, one of the tricks to this sandwich is you want a lot of mayonnaise. I use Hillman's or Duke's. Um, I'm not a big mayonnaise fan, but this sandwich really needs it. And this, this sandwich is all about more. It's, it's about ex excess, having too much. Uh, so you pull it apart there, and we've got some thick cut pepper ham. And 
I'll put it that much in there. It doesn't need the, the full slice. And then raw cabbage is one of the tricks to this because it uh, it adds the well, one is the raw element. Two, it puts texture and crunch in the uh, in the sandwich, and you'll need that. Then you just layer in some of your roast beef that you've made. That's, that's probably maybe one piece, one extra piece for Jack. And then set it right there. And you hit it with the debris gravy. Messy sandwich. Very messy sandwich. You don't eat this with long sleeves on your shirt. And um, of course it wouldn't be finished totally. without some green onions. And the one other thing that I like to add to it is the best hot sauce they make, crystals. And a little bit of that, and that's it. That is the Daddy Jack sandwich it's based off the ferdy from mothers uh in new orleans and it's a delicious sandwich and we serve it at the shop here in terrell texas uh as a, sa a sandwich once every few weeks or so but uh this is for you jack i really appreciate it hope you're feeling better and uh i wish i could make you one of these thanks a lot